Beowulf begins with a genealogy, the line of Danish kings beginning with Shield Chiefson and continuing on to Hrothgar, who will be a major character in this poem. The point of this genealogy is to emphasize how great the Danish kings were when Beowulf came to their aid. The poet describes them, beginning in the very first two lines of the poem, by saying, The spear Danes in days gone by, and the kings who ruled them, had courage and greatness. Shield, the scourge of many tribes, the wrecker of mead benches, came to the Danes as a helpless foundling in a boat. But he grows and improves his worth through great deeds, eventually rising to become a great Danish king. And there are several similarities to Moses there as well. Shield was a good king because he defeated all the Danes' enemies on their borders, making them pay tribute to the Danes. He also left his people with an heir to the throne, Beo, who also grew to be a good king. Without a king, the people lack protection from invaders, and they risk potential civil war as warriors vie for the throne to replace the deceased king. So leaving your people with a successor to your throne is extremely important for their stability and peace. When Shield dies, the Danes prepare a burial ship, a ring world prow, the poet says, masked with treasure in Shield's body. Usually, these burial ships were covered with a mound of earth like the famous Sutton Hoo ship found in Britain, but the Danes the Danes don't bury Shield's ship, as tradition usually dictated. They actually launch, launch his ship back out onto the open ocean, returning him to the sea from whence he came. The poet summarizes his description of Shield with the final assessment. That was good kinning. That was a good king. But good king though he was, the Danes mark his death by bewailing him and mourning their loss. Though Beo was a good man, the future of the kingdom is uncertain until Beo has proven his worth as a king. Will he be a generous ring giver? Will he be an effective leader of men? Will he be an effective warrior in the field? Will he subdue the tribes that are going to, uh, that are going to try to invade the Danes? This, this mention of Beo and the death of Shield uh, and the uncertainty of whether Beo is going to be a good king or not begins a major interlaced thread that goes through the whole poem of kingdoms threatened by the death of their king. It also begins the undercurrent of elegiac loss that affects the entire atmosphere of this poem. Well, Beo turns out to be a good king, especially because of his generosity. The poet describes him as giving freely while his father lives, so that afterward in age when fighting starts, steadfast companions will stand by him and hold the line. Beo's generosity to his thanes cemented bonds of loyalty and camaraderie among the Danish comitatus, the warrior society. Beo's line continues on through a few other kings to eventually to arrive to Hrothgar, who successfully, def- successfully defends the Danish empire built by his predecessors. After battling down his enemies, Hrothgar has been so successful that he has enough time to build a magnificent mead hall of immense size and splendor, and he calls it Heorat, which means heart or stag, a symbol of royalty in the Anglo-Saxon culture. From his gift throne in Heorat, Hrothgar would dispense his God-given goods to young and old. The Mead Hall, remember, represents the solidarity of the community, for it was the place of feasting, drinking, and singing. The bonds of king and warriors were strengthened through gifts the king gave in the hall. Boasts were made that kept warriors brave in battle, and songs were sung to keep fresh the memories of past heroism. When Heorot is completed, the Danes enjoy a period of prosperity and peace. But, as is typical with Anglo-Saxon poetry, in the very next line after the prosperity and peace, the poet mentions a barbarous burning sometime in the future, line 83, that will destroy Heorot because of the killer instinct unleashed among in-laws, the bloodlust rampant. Ironically, the Danes can build Heorot because of the solidarity and good kingship of Shield's line. But after Hrothgar dies, the poet tells us already at the very beginning of the poem, after Hrothgar dies, this line of kings destroys itself when Hrothgar's nephew tries to seize the crown from Hrothgar's sons. But before the horrors of civil war come to Heorot, the Danes will suffer first at the hands of a much crueler enemy, a monster that stalks the marshes.